understandable, but I'm trying to think. So, like, I'm trying to think of a band. If anyone out there could name me, like, an actor who had, like, two years worth of, like, good movies and dropped to the face Steven of the Seagal. earth. <laughs> Steven Seagal. Nobody listens to that motherfucker anymore. <laughs> Steven Seagal has made how many movies since his fucking heyday of shit? The early 90s? Right, right and nothing. no one fucking pays attention to and Steven Seagal. I think said he's on Netflix now. He does Netflix shows. Right, because it's fucking inexpensive to be able to throw his ass out there and do that. And they'll make their money back. He's a fucking straight to DVD motherfucker. And when Steven Seagal, if see, that's the thing, Steven Seagal doesn't open his fucking mouth. Here's the thing, you know why? He doesn't open his mouth and start talking about you know these action stars, Jason Statham or this guy. He doesn't say that shit. Here's the thing: if he does, motherfuckers laugh at him because it's dopey, dumb, dumb shit. With, with Russo, is that he was considered the on, Ahmad. the top guy in, in a period, which is considered the top period of wrestling in the last you know few right. decades. But That's again, people listen. To but him. he was. On top for two years. But look at in those that two position. Years. Right. Half of that was good, and the other half was WCW. <laughs> no, later on was WCW. The no, I'm three. 97 through 99. Those are two years. Right. 97 to 98 was fucking Vince. Into 99, where he fucking like, went WCW and shit the fucking bed. I just want to know why his other the other guy never gets talked about. Ferrara. Yeah. Oh, uh, he does a bit, but like Russo, the thing is, Russo's got a big mouth and took credit for shit, so people give it to him. Ferrara's fucking don't hear much from him. Bro, I came up with I this. I think he did a uh, an interview with Jim Ross, didn't he, one time recently, a few years ago? I don't know. I don't really pay much attention to the guy unless I see like one of his tweets was fucking I'll trending. Talk about Ed Ferrara, not, not oh, Russo. One of his tweets was, was for trending, and that's why I follow where he's talking about like the key to writing episodes. Like, good episodic TV is not caring about what the next step is and everyone's like you're a moron well in the Bischoff one the Bischoff the latest Bischoff episode is they're talking about um, Bash of the Beach 2000 with Hogan right so he, you know they go into backstories and Bischoff's like when I, when I would talk with Vince Russo he would get so passionate about what he's doing on this Monday night and Bischoff would say okay what are we doing next week and Vince Russo would not know what to say right because it's it was all about Fucking Crash, Crash TV. Yeah. Quick, 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 quick. That's what we gotta get. And that was it. It was fucking stupid. That's not I mean that's not a way to fucking think about it. If you again in any other form of entertainment, if you have a fucking songwriter <coughs> who writes the best song intros you've ever heard, the first thirty seconds of a song is amazing. And then the rest of it is shit. Because he doesn't know where he's going. That motherfucker gonna sell records? He'll sell ring. Does people do ringtones anymore? I don't was know. he <laughs> ringtone? Was he at the end of WCW? Who was long gone at that point? Um, he was gone. They tried pulling it all back at that point, and then towards the end, like you could see, they were trying to do something, you know, better with the product. Were they? Yeah, at the last couple, the last pay per view or two. Oh, come on. They Are weren't you? that bad. I don't know about dude. They were horrible. A couple, they really were bad. They were. They, there was some good match, dude. You got to give credit to the fact that fucking the young, the young dragons and fucking three count, and there was the other fucking team in there. Oh, there were those two had feuded, and then fucking one guy broke off each team, formed a tag team, and they did triple threat tag teams. Those matches were great. What was it? What was the? What was uh, working? On, who's working on top at that time? I believe it was fucking Booker and Steiner, with the two big guys, towards the end. There was others though too. Where was Goldberg at that point? Was he hurt? Uh, maybe. I'm trying to think, I honestly I can't remember any of that. But I do remember a lot of the undercard matches were pretty damn good. I mean, the fucking natural born thrillers. I didn't think they were good at all. They were entertaining for their five minute tag matches because you had these dudes who were like six and a half feet. They flopped on two fifty. Right, because they had to work. They weren't being protected. Again, you got a fucking six and a half foot Sean um, O'Hare doing swanton bombs. He's dead? I don't know. I don't think so. I think he died. I don't know. That's the people. People, did, is Sean O'Hare alive? Let us know, because the boss man I and I don't. Died. I think he died. Well, my point being is the fact that there's no other form of entertainment where you listen to somebody who had a fucking two year stretch criticize and bury everything Let me fucking ask you a going question. on. The, the angle between the hearts when they were. The faction from Canada, uh -huh. feeding with the Americans, that whole timeline. Who was who was running that? Was that Vince Russo? 
I'm sure Vince had fucking say in that. Okay, I think that was one of the greatest fucking storylines ever. Definitely, my, my but opinion. I also... The, the thing is, and WCW proved this, Vince Russo was only ever as good as Vince McMahon's yes or no. And I said that before. Right. He'd been passed from Jerry Taylor. O'Hare is dead. Yeah. Jerry Taylor, is that Snoke? Is it? Is that JT All-Star? I don't know. Snoke. Snoke. Uh... Again, name me a band that had one album and toured for two years. It was great, and then Nirvana. No, Nirvana had longer. Nirvana's first album was '89. Bleach. Yeah. They wouldn't have gotten their contract without Bleach, huh? No, but Nevermind is their album. Nevermind is their big one. Then they've got. Um, but still, he he was dead by '94. <laughs> so 91 to 94 It's three years But dude. you don't hear Here's the thing Cool You fine. don't hear nothing from He's dead Well yeah right You don't hear nothing from him But look at the rest of the band members I mean, The drummer I think Was the most talented in, right. that, in that group But that guy has continued To fucking make great music I agree I told totally you So that guy has made great music Since fucking 91 So he can say Whatever the fuck he wants About rock and roll Yeah JT All Star um, You ever coming back? Fucking Chris Novoselic Doesn't say a damn thing But let's keep going with this What if um the Screaming Trees, they had a fucking popular album back in the fucking uh, grunge days. Do you hear fucking Van Connor from The Screaming Trees or fucking... I don't even know who they are. Uh, if you heard the I song. Heard, I heard the song. I heard the group. Are they, the, are they as big as they might be Giants? No, they might be Giants had a long, illustrious career. Really? Yeah, fucking yeah, it's huge like college indie band. But you don't hear these guys going, oh, you know what the issue with rock and roll is? Like when fucking Little Richard shits on rock and roll. Little Richard has earned the fucking right to shit. That motherfucker invented rock and roll. So that's fine. Vince Russo to be telling any wrestler right now what they're bro. doing. Bro, the business. Bro, where's fucking... I'm, I'm, I'm fucking... Can I tag CPA in this? How do you tag somebody? I want to tag CPA. Somebody else. You can do it. Somebody else tag CPA in here. So CPA could join in the conversation when we're talking about the guy, rap is... And this guy, bro, his car was full of these Taco Bell and McDonald's rappers. I think at this point, and he's, bigs. Just trying, he's just trying to stay relevant. I think he lives with his in-laws. Probably. But he's a fucking... The fact that he's got anything negative to say about fucking anything... He shit all over for that fucking the, the Cody Rhodes show that they're doing, All In. He didn't shit all over the show. He shit all over the way you guys were talking about no, it. No, he fucking shit... All over the fucking fu Bro, they're doing this fucking thing And this and that And they fucking sold out in minutes Sold out in minutes I, I don't think he was shitting on the show And then No, and then they fucking fu Fucking started calling him out On like Shut the fuck up We just sold out this shit Bro, it's fucking <laughs> oh. Bro I genuinely just want fucking Cornette. I'm fucking Brooklyn, the fucking yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just want Cornette to just fucking. He, but he rips him up every time. He, he gets old after a while. Hey, motherfucker, Russo. God damn. Did they work together in um, TNA too? Um, for a small amount of time. But that, I mean, obviously it didn't work out. I don't know. To me. I don't think Russo killed the business or killed WCW, but he certainly fucking assisted it. WCW had issues. You know, there was a lot right. of, Here's a the lot thing. of fucking people. Here's the thing. That. And we, you could start with Bischoff by giving the guy, he's like hauling ass. Yeah, no, no, the fucking talk. giant fucking contracts. People got lazy. People didn't give a fuck. Exactly. Uh, I mean, but, however, I think if, like, you have, like, in, uh, somebody, like, in a hospital and they need fucking assistance and you fucking take the oxygen away, you're guilty of murder. Well, he was trying to do a job, but he didn't do it. Not do it, he didn't do it right. Yeah, it was the shits. Absolute dog shit. Ugh. Brooklyn, the bro. Fucking Brooklyn, the fucking bro. Ugh. I don't talk like that. Bro. Bro. These rappers. Any of you who don't know what I'm referencing, I, I get a. I, I remember when. Maybe, oh, maybe I'll post it later. Where uh, Vince Russo just goes in on a young wrestler who was tasked with driving him around and apparently uh, elaborates or fucking speaks in fucking hyperbole in a story 
about how the guy's car was so dirty. It's bro, I was never one of these guys who had to fly first class, bro. Oh, it's the fucking most obnoxious thing. And I was looking and it the, comes out to the Road Warriors music. Oh my god. <laughs> With the Pope Mobile members. This is what I'm saying. He did all this shit and it was all dog shit. And again, everyone fucking would, would, would put it out where it was like forever. I think even he had said it in that shoot. He goes, you could tell for every, you know, you know, 20 good ideas he had, Vince chose one. Yeah. That you know, speaks more to Vince McMahon's you know, ability to fucking put shit together than uh, rather than Russo's. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's obvious that Vince McMahon is used to him. He wouldn't be as successful as he is if he didn't. Eh, maybe. I believe so. I, th I think it's a fair assessment when people say that he's kind of lost touch. But I don't think Vince McMahon was ever booking for uh, the wrestling fans. He was booking to make money. Right. But I also think that's true. I know that I'll probably have a couple of people and listening. The, and, and, and I know that a lot of people disagree with this, but the point of being in wrestling is to make money. It's a wrestling business. Yeah. I don't go to work to, you know, just make sure that the rooms are cold. I, I make I go to work to, you know, make no, a living absolutely. for myself. I think that's one of the things, again, where, you know, I'll say it flat out, and I know that I'll probably catch some flack for this from anybody who's watching, but a good wrestling booker doesn't book for the fans. Does boss man get angry? You're like, what for? You book for potential fans. You don't book for the fans you already have. Yeah, I, 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 I like that. Yeah. Because if you think about it, those fans are already there. They're going to be buying tickets no matter what. How many times have you heard people in the last, I don't know, 10 years even, uh, Raw was the shits, Raw was the shits, and then next week, Raw was the shits, Raw was the shits. Week after that, Raw was the shits, Raw was the shits. They're watching every week. They'll complain about it every week, but they're watching every week. You don't book for them. They're not going anywhere. Their wrestling fans are going to watch anything that is wrestling, no matter what you give them. You book for people who are potential fans, which is why whenever you see, oh, Roman Reigns shouldn't be this, Roman Reigns shouldn't be that, and yet every time they do any kind of... Uh, you know, blind surveys of people who are not wrestling fans, show them a picture, I think the last one was Dean Ambrose and then Roman Reigns, everyone said, that's the superstar. I said that, so they had The Shield, remember? Yeah. They came out, they were out for maybe a few months. And at the time, I really didn't watch wrestling, and I remember talking to somebody, we're not going to name, and I said, I looked at them, and I said, that's, that's the guy that's going to break out. And I was right. Well, see, the fans were letting him break out too. The fans were firmly behind Roman Reigns. Why? Because all he would do in the match was spear, Punch, fucking grunt. He was an ass kicker, and nobody boos an ass kicker. I don't know what happened. What happened? <laughs> so two things. My theory is two things happened. One, he was kind of pushed too much too quick, and a lot of his uh, flaws were really able, you know, you were able to see. Because, you know, now, nowadays fans are a whole lot smarter. But was, was Austin other... and The Rock pushed too far? Oh, the Rock was, but was Austin pushed too far too quick? No, because Austin could back it up. Roman wasn't there. That was, uh, the one that wanted to listen to everything. Right, so James Haynes made the point. I always remember the part in private parts. Um, or the ones that watch and listen to everything are the guys who don't like the subjects. You know, Howard Stern's audience was... When they showed the ratings, they said the people that hate him listen to... Yeah. Listen d more. Mm -hmm. Double. Just why? To see what he's going to say next. See, yeah. That's how that goes. Um, no, I just fucking blanked on the subjects we were talking about. Uh, pushing Roman Reigns. And right, so my other theory about why I think fans kind of turn their backs on Roman. So, for how many years were WWE fans conditioned to hate everything that was Vince and Stephanie and Shane corporate? How many years? Since the Austin era. Right. So, 15 years, let's say. More. 98. Yeah. That's 20 years. 15 years. They were taught to hate anything that was... You know, corporate. And here comes Roman Reigns, who is the corporate guy. Like, there's no denying he's, you know, the, the fucking go the goose lay the golden egg for Vince. So they are rejecting it right off the bat. Because it wasn't who they chose. It is who the fucking corporation chose. Just my theory. Just my theory. Feel free to question that. Feel free to say no. But also, I think they pushed him too much too soon. 
uh, when all they wanted to see was him. They wanted to see Goldberg. Fucking Spear.